Romans chapter 5. I'll turn to it. Romans 5. Got the screen back working again. Switch off for some reason. Going to read the first 11 verses. Right, uh, on the screen if you want to follow them. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our suffering. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Okay. So Paul starts this chapter off. Right? He starts it with this phrase, therefore, therefore, whenever Paul uses therefore, ask yourself, what's it there for? Okay? Therefore. And he's looking back to all that's gone before. All that he said so far in his letter to the church in Rome. And he's summarising it with this one phrase. He's saying, therefore, all that I've said about sin and about the gospel and about Jesus, since we have been justified through faith. Our faith in Jesus has meant it's just as if I'd never sinned. That's just awesome and amazing and shocking that that would be so. You see, we've been saved from some things. We've been saved from sin. Well, I believe the lie and turn from God and worship other things. We, we've been saved kind of from darkness. We've been saved from hell. And ultimately, we're saved from God's wrath as well. But as we start to look at chapter 5, right, Paul is actually saying that we're not just saved from these things, right, saved from some terrible evil now and some awful fate in the future. He's not just saying that. He's actually saying we're saved for something. We're saved for something, for a wonderful future. But actually we're saved for a priceless Christian life today. <coughs> Being saved is good news now. Now, not just good news in the future. It's good news now. And what Paul does very early in this chapter, verse, first five verses, he actually looks at five things we have now. Five things we've got right now. If we've, if we've got faith in Christ. We have this now. What do we have? Peace with God. Access to God. We share in the hope of the glory of God. The Holy Spirit being given to us. And through the Holy Spirit we can know God's love 
in a heartfelt experience. Five things. So I'm a Christian. I've got faith in Jesus. I've been justified. So what now? What now? What now? Let's have a look at those five things today. Peace with God. It's not talking about a kind of peace. You know, the kind of peace and quiet we might need after a busy Christmas. It's not that kind of peace. It's not the kind of peace you might need after a hectic day at work. It's not that. This is a peace within relationships. Relationships that were once broken, being restored, brings peace. You know, when a peace treaty is signed between two nations, right, it's because they've been at war, isn't it? They've been at war with one another. And when they sign the peace treaty, then peace hopefully reigns. That's what we hope, isn't it? But what Paul is talking about is actually it's a peace with God, with our Creator. Peace with God, a restored relationship with God, because our, our relationship with Him was broken because of our sin. And God says, now you've been justified through Christ, the relationship with God has been restored. So, so does that mean we've been at war with God? Have we been at war with God? Yes. Yes. Verse 10 says, while we were God's enemies. We were God's enemies. You see, without the saving work of Jesus on the cross, each of us is kind of lined up in the trenches. Just imagine it. We're in the trenches, ready for battle. And as we look across no man's land, our enemy was God. Each of us facing the wrath of God, this is verse 9. Since we've now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Christ? So before Jesus saved me, I was an enemy of God's and I was going to be facing his wrath. What's wrath? Where it's his righteous right, and just anger against sin and disobedience. And it's an integral part of who God is, his character. It reflects his holiness, it reflects his justice. He said it right at the beginning of his letter, so it's not a surprise that we come back to the wrath now. Because right in chapter 1, verse 18, he says this, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. That's why he's writing the letter, talking about the wrath of God. In another letter, in Ephesians, Paul says this. He describes us as being children of wrath. <clears throat> We're children of wrath. On our own, there's nothing we can do to escape the wrath of God. Colossians 3.6 says this. Because of our sin and disobedience, the wrath of God is coming. Being found in Christ. All right? Being a Christian has saved us. Yes, it saved us from sin. Hallelujah. Yes, it saved me from the, the awful thing of death. Death has lost its sting. Yes, it's even saved me from Satan's work. But ultimately, what we are saved from is God's wrath. But as we've seen, right, as we've seen, Paul wants us not to just look back at what we're saved from, he wants us to look forward, <coughs> forward to what is ours now in Jesus. You see, we're justified through faith in Jesus. We're saved for something amazing now. Access to God. A share in his glory. The Holy Spirit. Experiencing the love of God now. And we've got peace with God. Our relationship with God is restored now. Do you know it's not some future event that we have to wait and hope and hold on to say, will it happen? Will it be okay? Will I be okay? Have I done enough good? 
compared to my evil? Will it really be okay when I get to that womb? It's not like that. That's what the other religions say. Like they say, you do these rituals, or make sure you do some more good than bad in your life, and then wait to see if you pass the test at the end, when you meet God. That's not peace with God. That's not the gospel of Jesus. We don't wait for some future event at the end of our lives to know whether I'm a friend of God or I'm still his enemy. We don't have to wait till then. We can know now. Now we can know it now that we've got peace with God because Jesus was crucified. Right? Jesus did rise from the dead. And when we've got faith in him, that's all that's required to know that we're his friend. In fact, we're more than friends. We're children of God. We can know up front. You know, I'm, I was a teacher, for those of you that know, for many, many years. And um, sometimes you'd have, you'd receive a class. I used to teach maths in different classes in the primary school when I was a teacher. Not when I was a head teacher, but as a teacher. And sometimes you get a kid turn up to your lesson. And the first thing they would do is they'd put on your desk this little report card. Right? They were in trouble. Right, they've been in trouble lots, and so the decision will be made, they're going to be on the report card. And my job as a teacher is to teach the lesson, keep an eye on them, and at the end of the lesson, you know, put ticks against the objectives that they've met. Right, well, this child, he wanted to be in control, so do what I did. First five minutes, he'd blow it. Because then he's controlled me, put the cross rather than the tick, rather than me deciding that. So I, I tried something different. So he arrived in my lesson, he gave me his report card, and I put smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, gave it back to him. said, there you go. I said, what? What? Thankfully, he had a really good lesson. <laughs> it worked. It did work. Um, do you know what? That's what Jesus has done on the cross for us. On your report card, before God, you don't face the wrath of God. He's put smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. It's done! It's all been achieved. It's amazing. Through faith in Jesus, God declares his acceptance of us up front. He gives us his new title. We're no longer children of wrath. We're children of God. Adopted into his family. We have got peace with the creator of everything we see around us. Of God. Now there's much that I, and probably you, get wrong at times. But it doesn't affect the report card. It doesn't affect the report card. Because Jesus is the one that's done it, not me. Yeah, Caesar, I can remember he's writing to those Christians in Rome. Caesar, the Roman emperor. How did he secure peace? Well, he secured peace by shedding the blood of his enemies. So he did it. How does God secure our peace? By shedding his own blood. By shedding his own blood, his son. Giving his life. Jesus, the true peacemaker. He's reconciled us with himself. So we're no longer enemies. We no longer face God's wrath. The second thing Paul wants us to know we have now is access to God. Imagine a child, right, growing up, absolutely hating their parents. And it does happen sometimes. Treating their parents really badly, even being violent towards them. And do you know what? When they get older, they're still doing it. And when they, they get to the age where they move out, and, and they, they move away, and they live away from home, the child continues to hate their parents and is hostile towards them. Just imagine that. Now the parents still love their child, don't they? But they have to change the locks on their house. They have to keep themselves safe from this person who's their child, who hates them. Now one day that child phones home and asks for forgiveness for all the awful things they've done and said. Now the parents have got a choice, haven't they? They could forgive the child, that's the start. 
But it'd be okay for them to say, yeah, we forgive you, but we decide to still keep our distance. And just keep safe. That, that would be a reasonable thing to do, wouldn't it? They don't make any plans to meet up. Or, they could get a new key card. They could put it in an envelope and post it to their child with a simple message saying, come home. We were once enemies with our Father in heaven. Jesus told a story similar to that. Like a son. I like was really hurtful to his dad. He said, Dad, I wish you were dead. I want my inheritance now. Dad graciously gives him his half of the, of the family wealth. And he goes off. And he wastes it. And he ends up in a right mess. And when he realises what a mess it is, he goes, oh, I need to go home. I'm just going to be a servant in my dad's farm. And he comes home. Does the dad keep a distance from him? Does he keep him at arm's length? Does he send him to the, to the shed at the back of the farm and say, well, you live with it. You live there. Home. What does he do? He runs. He embraces him. He gives him a new cloak and new sandals and a ring. He hugs him and he kisses him and he parties. Because his son that was lost has been found. We have, because of our big brother Jesus, we have access to God. Now, not just in the future when we're in eternity with him. Now, we have access. Let me tell you another story. might help you. In the Civil War in America, there was a, a young soldier. He was fighting in the battle. And he wanted to go and see President uh, Abraham Lincoln, wouldn't it have been, I guess, at that time. He wanted to see Lincoln. Uh, because his dad and his brother had both been killed, and there was no one to oversee running the farm. And the farm was producing all the crops that were helping feed the soldiers. So if there's no one there, it was all going to become a disaster. So he went, he went to the White House and he got to the gates and he was refused entry. He wasn't allowed in. Dejected, he sat on a park bench, really looking absolutely down. A little boy comes up to him and goes, Oh, what's wrong with you? And so he told me, he said, Well, I need to get home to the farm, I need to get running the farm, and, and I need to see the president, but I wasn't allowed in. And then a little boy grabbed his hand and started going towards the White House. I went straight through the gates! And he went through the front door! And he went up the stairs! And he burst straight into the home office! And then the soldier found himself stood before the president. How did that happen? As a little boy, was President Lincoln's son. That's how he got access. Who's holding your hand? Who's holding your hand? And lead you in to the presence of the Father. Jesus has done it. You have access. Access to God. That's really what verse 8 is trying to say, really. It says this. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, our enemies of God, sinners, Christ died for us. What he did. And he said, come on, come with me. I can take you into the very throne room of heaven to be with God. So I'm a Christian. I'm justified by faith. Hallelujah. So what now? I've got peace with God. My relationship is restored. And I've got access to God because of Jesus. And I get a share in the hope of the glory of God as well. God will make his glory shine through us. Again, it's not some future promise. It's a now experience. God's glory displayed to the world through us as followers of Jesus. You display God's glory to others. Here again. You display, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you have been justified in faith, you display God's <coughs> glory to others. Tell the person next to you, you display God's glory to others. Tell them. <laughs> you display God's 
display your story to others. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Moses, going way back, right? way back in this big story. Moses, he comes down from meeting with God and, and his face was glowing. And they kind of go, put your face over it. It's just too much. We can't cope with it. His glory right, will be ever more visible to us. And yes, one day his glory will be fully, fully shown. Of course it will be. But right now, as a follower of Jesus, we share in his glory. And we shine. Because God wants to Kind of work with us of being a witness. We, yeah, we get to spend time in the access to God, and because of that, we kind of shine. We become ones that are light to the world. It's amazing. Fourth thing, Holy Spirit given to us. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, Father. Son, Holy Spirit, God Himself is given to everyone who believes. Everybody. Now we will learn a lot more about the Holy Spirit in later chapters in Romans. We'll come to that. We will come to that. But now that I am a Christian, now I am justified by faith in Jesus, I've got this wonderful gift of God coming to dwell in me. So not only do I have access to God, I also have the opportunity to give God access to me. And I can welcome him. If you've never ever been filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to say today, today, ask him. Right? It's not some big kind of mystical thing. Just say, God, would you come? And actually, you know, when Paul talks about it in other letters, he says, keep on being filled with the Spirit. So it's a good thing to do. Just say, God, would you come again today and fill me with your Spirit? We are his temple. And what's a temple? A temple represents the place where God dwells. So we're temples. God dwells in us. This wonderful gift. And when the Holy Spirit comes to live in us, it's amazing because he starts to grow fruit in us. I look back now on my life and I see I am far more self-controlled than I was. I've still got a way to go. Self-control is one of my ones. I still kind of keep asking God to help me with it. But I am more self-controlled, more loving, more patient, more kind. I can see God's growing fruit in me because his Holy Spirit is in me. And you will find the same if you allow him to work in your life. And not only does he grow fruit in us, and our characters become more like Christ, he also gives out gifts as well. Gifts of hospitality, of giving, of acts of service, of miracles and healings and, and prophecy and a heavenly tongue, and, and words of knowledge, gifts of administration, of teaching, of evangelism. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing in our hearts. Final thing from the passage. I'm a Christian. I have got, I've been justified, right, through faith in Christ Jesus. What now? We can experience God's love today. We can experience the love of God today. We've got peace with God, we've got access to God, we share in his glory, we have the Holy Spirit with us, and we experience the love of God. We can know the objective truth of his love. Because his love strengthens us. It strengthens us to follow him. Right? His love is bearing fruit in our heart. His love impacts our whole being. Know that God loves you. I know that he loves you no matter what you do. That's another practical thing, isn't it? Right? I wish I could be a parent like that every day. I love my kids no matter what they do. I try. I do really try. All right? But God does. He loves you because he loves you. Because he loves you. So the gospel. Oh, we lost it. We go on. There's a light 
Ollie in there. It's back, is it? Come on. I think, I think that's the slide I want. We'll see. So the gospel, the good news of Jesus is that through faith in Jesus, we are justified, right? Slate white clean. We're saved from sin, death, the evil one. We're saved from evil from God's wrath. We're no longer his enemy. But we are saved for a wonderful life here and now. Don't just think the Christian faith is about holding on, I just keep my head down, I get through life because I've got this thing in the future. That's not the, Christ, that's not the gospel. Yes, it's true, there is this amazing future. But there's life now in all its fullness. Peace with God, relationship restored, access to God, because the Son has made a way possible. We display his glory, we are light shining in this world, bringing the kingdom of God. I'm filled with his spirit, experiencing his love. This is what we are saved for. A new life, new creation life within him. And we're not going to wait for some future thing. It's for now, for today. So I'm just going to be quiet for a minute. I want you to take an audit. Take a little audit of yourself, of your own life. With those five areas, peace, access, glory, love, Holy Spirit. Is there an area you're going, oh, I'm not really experiencing that. I'm, I'm not living in the truth of that as much as I used to, or I want to grow in that. Do you truly know that you have peace with God? You have it, but do you live in that? Your relationship restored. Are you still angry with God over something? Bring it to him. Are you still dealing with shame and guilt in your heart? And just, how can I have access to God? If you only knew what I'd done. Remember, it's not what you've done, it's what Christ has done that matters. It's what Christ has done that matters. He said it's finished, he's done it. So don't feel guilt or shame coming into the presence of Father God. Just remember that story. A son who went away and spent all the dad's stuff. When he came home, the dad hugged him. In fact, he ran towards him and hugged him. And accepted him back in. That's how Father God comes to you. Do you realise how you are a light in this dark world? You're not the light of the world, that's Jesus. But Christ is in you. And so you become this thing that kind of radiates the glory of God. Do you want to be filled with the Spirit again? Ask him today. Do you know his love? You know, one way you know his love is by the way we love one another. I like how we love one another. I want to say to you, all right, we've had quite a few new people kind of coming into the church in the last few months. And every single one of them has said, what an amazing welcome you get when you come to this church. How warm everyone <coughs> welcomes you. And so I want to say thank you. All right? We've got the biggest welcome team ever. Because we're all welcome, we really are. I know we have some people standing at the door. But actually we're all welcome. Because we're showing the love of God. And so it's not just God loves me, I can read it in the Bible. I experience it by being part of this community. So don't take yourself out of it. And kind of keep yourself set. Get stuck in. Because as you meet and you're fellowshipping with one another, you experience the tangible love of God. Just amazing. It's amazing. David, do you want to come and play and like, lead us in the song in a minute? But just have a think about those five, five nows. Now, because I'm justified in Christ, now I've got this with God. Live in the truth of it. Speak to yourself. Come on, Martin, you know you are. It's true. Access to God. Don't let me be shame of you with that. You've got access to God. Shine. Shine for him. Know that you're filled with God. God is temple, totally.